Welcome to Miss Business Guide to Provisioning. So, first off, what is provisioning? Well, it is the cooking skill in Elder Scrolls Online, and it allows you to make mmm food and drinks. So what does food and drink do in Elder Scrolls Online? Well, drinks tend to increase your recovery and foods tend to increase your max stats. They're a little bit hazy sometimes, but that is generally how it works in ESO. Occasionally, you'll find that maybe a festival recipe or a DLC recipe will do a little different. Here you can see which mother's potent brew is a drink, but it increases my max magicka and max health, as well as magicka recovery. Provisioning is definitely a good craft to learn on at least one of your characters. Once we start going through the passives, you'll see why. As well, generally in game, you'll always want to have a food or a drink running. Generally in PvE, you're going to want a food because you need to buff up your maximum health. So let's take a look at the provisioning skill line. First off, we have recipe quality. This allows you to use better recipes, and I'll go over what the different qualities mean in a little bit. Recipe improvement is telling you what level of recipes. So the level of the recipe, you'll want to match your character or else you might not be getting as big of buff as you could. Gourmand, here is the part where even leveling provisioning, taking these skill points and then whatever, getting rid of the rest is handy on all of your characters. This adds 20 minutes to the duration of any eaten food when you invest three skill points. This really helps you cut back on your food intake. As well, you can add 20 minutes to the duration of any drink. Once again, really nice, especially if you're making Sigic or Ambrosia drinks. Chef creates three extra servings for each food recipe made. So when I use the ingredients to make one item, I actually end up making four. Brewer is the same thing, but for drinks. Last but not least, we have a hireling, and they will bring you stuff every day, or if you put all three skill points in, every 12 hours. So you're going to need a couple things if you want to get into provisioning. The first thing you'll need is a cooking fire. The second thing you'll need is recipes. You will have to learn these on your character. Once you learn on a character, it disappears. The final thing you're going to need is you're going to need ingredients. Different recipes take different ingredients. So find yourself a cooking fire after you've learned some recipes and see what you can make. Here on PC, you'll see that we have ingredients and have skills check marks. These are really good because especially when you're starting out, have skills means you've learned the recipe, even though it only shows you ones you know. But have ingredients is really nice because that way it only shows items you can actually craft right now. So let's take a little look at the UI. First, we have meat dishes. As I click through, you can see all of these meat dishes in actually increase max health. As well, they're all green. Once I move on to fruit dishes, you can see this is only increasing max magicka. Vegetable dishes increase max stamina. Like I said, all of those increased one max stat and they were all green. Once I continue moving on to savories, look, it's blue. This is because savories will increase maximum health and maximum magicka. So because it does two things, it's actually going to be blue quality. Here you can see that the UI is nicely split up. I have no add-ons running right now. This is really how it looks for everyone on PC. You'll see that here we have max health and max stamina in its own little list, and Entremet will be Max Magicka and Max Stamina. In this list, it's actually going to list your recipes in the order of the level. So right at the beginning, you'll see that I have a blue dish meant for level 10 to 14, and all the way down at the bottom, you're going to find my highest level ones, champion point 150 to 160. 
Gourmet is purple quality. Purple quality is pretty cool because it actually does all three things. So it increases your max health, your max magicka, and your max stamina. Delicacies is where it gets a little more confusing. Here is where you're going to find those weird DLC or festival recipes that might do more than one thing. And all your festival recipes actually are here anyways, just because they're a little bit special. There is also a couple different recipes that you can learn that are actually gold. They will also show up under delicacies. Moving on to drinks here, you can see that it's split up the same way. Alcoholic drinks increase your health recovery, whereas tea actually increases your magicka recovery. Tonics, stamina recovery, and then we go through all of our dual drinks as well. Here at the very end, you have your delicacies, and here you can see is my Sijic Ambrosia, how I can craft that. It is gold colored. There's a couple different gold colored recipes or legendary quality recipes, I should say, in the game. And I may be wrong, but I believe all of them take Perfect Row. Perfect Row can be bought from other players in game, or you can fillet fish for it. I've got a fishing guide if you're not quite sure how to do that. In order to find recipes, somewhere really good to look is in furniture. So we're talking dressers, wardrobes, backpacks. This doesn't matter if it's in a delve or if you're stealing it from inside a house. As well, delves are really good for finding yourself ingredients because barrels, baskets, and all that will carry provisioning ingredients. I'm in Cold Harbor where there is no justice system, so it's really nice I can just wander around town and take everything without worrying about getting a bounty. Recipes can also drop off of mobs, but it's pretty rare, so I wouldn't bank on that for the most of your recipes. You'll definitely want to loot everything in sight. Once you've actually learned a couple recipes and you have all the ingredients you need, you just find that cooking fire, select what you want to make, and go ahead and press R to craft it. There you go, you can see I just made four solitude salmon millet soup. Another cool thing is when you're hunting for ingredients is if you find baskets, let's say you see a basket of apples, when you loot that item, it's actually going to be apples. So keep your eyes peeled if you know you're after a couple specific ingredients. If you're having troubles finding a cooking fire, somewhere that almost always has a cooking fire is inns. Even if you hover over the inn marker and it doesn't say there's a cooking fire there, there's still a really good chance there is. There's also a ton of cooking fires just out in the wild. Most fires in game, you can use for cooking fires. That's all for my guide to provisioning in Elder Scrolls Online. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for joining me. Bye!